In this lesson, we'll learn about the actions which we can perform on a radio button, checkbox, and switches. So first of all, let's go ahead and select the element. To do that, I'll go ahead and inspect the same first. And you will see this is a form check element with an input element and a label for the same. So let's go ahead and locate it using the get by label locator. And I'll go ahead and copy the label for the same. So what we can do is use our page, get by label locator, and the label says this. And if I go ahead and store the same in a radio option, it's option two. So I'll go ahead and name it accordingly. And now if I want to check the same, that is I'm gonna select this option, uh, we can actually just click it. But for these things, we have a separate method for the same, which is called check. And if I go ahead and execute the same, you can see our radio button getting checked. Now the same applies for the upper option. So if I go ahead and create a radio option one and have the page get by label locator, copy in the label we have. And then if I go ahead and paste it in, and now if I check the radio one option instead, you will see it getting checked. Now, if I go ahead and again, perform the same action, you will see no change because it is already checked. So that's how you can use the check method to check a radio button. And the same applies for checkboxes and switches as well. So let's go ahead and perform the same. So again, if I go ahead and inspect it, you will see the same pattern. That is, it is a form element with an input and label for the same. So check box will say page get by label. And the label says default check box. And now I can go ahead and check the same using our check method. Great. Now, if I go ahead and again execute the same thing, you will see no change. That is, the check method will only check it if it is not checked. And if it is already checked, it will go ahead and skip and do nothing. Now, let's say if we want to uncheck this option right here, what we can do is just check whether it's checked or not. That is, checkbox has a utility attribute that is, is underscore checked. So we can do just this. You can see it goes ahead and says true. So we can just use this as a condition to set the state of our checkbox. And let's say if we want to set it to unchecked, then, then we can use the uncheck method as you'd expect. It goes ahead and unchecks this box right here. Now, if you'd like to pass true and false values instead of buttons or methods like this, checkbox also has a method called set checked state. And here you can pass true or false. So if I go ahead and say true, it goes ahead and checks the same, which is just the equivalent of this method. And if I go ahead and say we want to set the state as unchecked, you can see it goes ahead and performs the same as uncheck. So uncheck and the check is shorthand for the set check true and set checked false respectively. Now there's also another side of the story that is if I go ahead and try to just click the element, that is the click method, you can see it goes ahead and checks it. But now if I go ahead and check it again, you can see it unchecks the same. So it is just like the normal behavior you'd expect with check. That is, if I click it, it gets checked. If I unclick it, like click it again, it gets unchecked. That's why you have the check and the uncheck method to be more specific with your actions. And finally, we can perform the same with this switch right here as well. And as I showed you, they follow the same pattern with the label 
with the input field. So let's go ahead and copy it and let's have it checked because we're gonna uncheck it. So I'll go ahead and select our switch. We'll use the get by label locator, provide it the label. And now simply go ahead and call the uncheck method. You can see it gets unchecked. We can check it as well. And that's how we can perform the basic check and uncheck actions with our radios, checkboxes, and switches.